Welcome to Shankar IAS Academy's Editorial Analysis, 24th October 2024. Let's get into the today's editorial topics. The first editorial is taken from the Hindu newspaper, which is about the Manipur crisis, the issue of managing diversity. The second editorial is taken from Indian Express, which, which talks about perpetual emergency, NCR's pollution crisis. The third editorial topic is taken from Indian Express, which is children must come first. Fear or misuse is no reason to dilute strict laws action against child abuse cases. Without any delay, let's get into the today's edi editorial topic. This editorial speaks about the Supreme Court ruled that merely, merely viewing, possessing or storing sexually explicit material involving minors referred as child sexual exploitation and abuse material is a crime under the protection of children from sexual offences, POCSO Act 2012 and the Information Technology Act even if such material is not shared or transmitted. This judgment overruled a previous Madras High Court decision, decision that had stated Mary possession wasn't an offence. This has expanded the legal scope of child sexual abuses. With this information, let's see child abuse in detail. Child abuse can be defined as physical, emotional or sexual harm inflicted to were children. The protection of children from sexual offences, POCSO Act 2012, specially deals with sexual abuse defining offences such as sexual assault, harassment, child pornography. This law ensures that all sexual offences against children under 18, irrespective of their gender, covered and mandates child-friendly processes for reporting, investigating and trial. Let's see what are all the protection measures against child abuse are followed in, in India. Legal Protection POCSO Act 2012 It is a comprehensive law to protect children from sexual abuse, exploitation and pornography. It mandates special courts for speedy trial and imposes stringent punishments. Then Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 which is it, which speaks about care and protection for children in needs and deals with rehabilitation and reintegration of abused children. And also, Information, Information Technology Act 2000 addresses the issue of child pornography, make it illegal to produce, distribute or store sexually explicit materials involving minors. Let's move on to constitutional protection against child abuse. Article 15, subclass 3 of Indian Constitution allows the state to make special provisions for the protection and welfare of children. And Article 21 of the Indian Constitution guarantees the rights to life and personal liberty, which includes a child rights to live with dignity and protection from abuse. And also, Article 39, subclass E and F of the Indian Constitution directs the states to ensure children are not exploited or abused. Now, let's see what are all the challenges faced in implementation of child abuse laws. Delay in legal process, police insensitivity, victim blaming and stigma, inadequate re rehabilitation facilities. These are all the major challenges faced in implementation process of child protection. To overcome these challenges, let's see some way forward measures. Public awareness and campaign, which increase awareness about child protection laws through schools, social medias and local communities focus on rural areas. Training for police and judiciary, ensure police and judicial officers are trained to handle child abuse cases sensitively and follow proper procedures. Speedy trial. Strengthen the infrastructure of special courts to ensure faster trials and reduce case backlogs. Better supports and victims. Establish more rehabilitation and counselling centres for victims to aid their recovery. Mandatory reporting. Encourage schools, healthcare providers, community workers to report suspected cases. With this information, try to answer the main practice question. Discuss the legal and constitutional provisions in India to protect children from abuse and analyze the challenges in the effective implementation of this laws. Let's move on to the next editorial. 
In this article, Perpetual Emergency Discusses NCR's Ongoing Pollution Crisis Despite the Supreme Court Affirms the Right to Clean Air. Poor condition between government and Commission for Air Quality Management has hampered progress. In this editorial, they clearly said the National Capital Region consistently records some of the worst air quality levels globally. Rapid urbanization, industrialization and poor environmental management have made pollution a perpetual crisis in the region. The issue of pollution in National Capital Region, particularly Delhi, is complex and solved Solving it requires coordinated efforts by multiple stakeholders. Let's see the background of this crisis. The pollution crisis in national capital region have been escalating over the last few decades due to several contributing factors. Delhi's geographical location surrounded by industrial and agricultural hub increases pollution making it vulnerable to seasonal changes. And additionally, poor urban planning, heavy vehicle density and tax enforcement of environmental regulations have made clean air a constant challenge. And additionally, poor urban planning, heavy vehicle density and lax enforcement of environmental regulation have made clear air a constant challenge. With this, let's see the key milestones. The Supreme Court's 1998 directive to shift pollution industries outside the city and also introduction of compressed natural gas CNG in public transports and formation of Commission, Commission for Air Quality Management 2020 to coordinate efforts to combat air pollution in Delhi. Let's see what are all the major causes of pollution in national capital region. Vehicle air emission. With over 10 million vehicles in Delhi alone, vehicle air exhaust is a significant contributor to significant contributor to air pollution. Diesel run heavy duty vehicles contribute a large share of nitrogen oxide and particularly and particulate matters. Next, industrial pollution. National Capital Region is home to several industrial zones that release large quantity of pollutants including sulphur dioxide, carbon dioxide and other, and other particulate matters. Construction activities Ra Rapid urbanization results in continuous construction generating dust and par particulate matters and lack of adherence to dust control norms during construction further aggra aggravates the situation further aggravates the situation. Stubble burning. Farmers in neighboring states like Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh engage in large scale stubble burning during October November months, which contribute to sharp increase in pollution level in national capital region. Waste burning. The open burning of municipal solid waste including plastic added to the toxicity of the air. Seasonal factors. During winters, a combination of lower temperatures, thermal inversion and lack of wind causes pollutants to get trapped closer to the ground, which creating a dense smog. Geographical Disadvantage Delhi's landlocked geography limits the dispersion of pollutants, making it harder for pollutants to leave the region naturally. Let's see the major impacts of air pollution. Health impacts. In, increase, increased incidence of asthma, bronchitis and other chronic respiratory diseases. Prolonged exposure to pollutants like PM2.5 and nitrogen oxide leads to heart diseases, strokes and premature deaths. Children are particularly vulnerable to pollution with reports showing impaired lung development and cognitive disorders. Let's see the economic impacts of air pollution. It reduces the productivity due to health issues, loss of work days and health care expenses and, and it creates health care expenses. Air pollution affects Delhi's global image reducing tourism and impacting the local economy. With this, let's move on to environmental impacts. 
it creates harm to local biodiversity especially in urban parts and green areas and also it damages historical monuments like the taj mahal due to acid rain and particulate deposition social inequality the urban poor living in congested area with little green cover face the brunt of the pollution crisis their access to health care is limited increase which increases their vulnerability with this information let's see the measures taken to combat air pollution so far legal and regulatory action graded response action plan 2017 designed to implement emergency measures like closing schools restricting construction activities and halting industrial activities during severe pollutions scheme or even vehicle scheme which is implemented in delhi to reduce vehicular congestion and pollution by allowing vehicle with odd even number places to play on alternate days infrastructure initiatives public transport and promotion of e vehicles banning of fire crackers during festivals like diwali delhi has imposed a ban on the sale and bursting of fire crackers to reduce the spike in air pollution levels technological measures national clean air program which is launched in 2019 by ministry of environment forest and climate change to reduce air pollution by 20 to 30% in targeted cities by 2024 it includes capacity building better monitoring and coordination with state governments let's see some of the way forward measures to combat air air pollution in national capital region long term policy solutions long term policy solutions need for better implementation of air quality norms and laws at the ground level focusing on penalizing violations comprehensive air quality management must play a proactive role in resolving interstate coordination issues and hold our agencies accountable promoting sustainable practices encourage electric mobility extend subsidies and infra infrastructure to increase the penetration of e vehicles and also sustainable agricultural practices without stubble burning technological innovations increase the use of air purifiers green belts and vertical gardens in urban spaces to combat air pollution at the local level and also invest in clean fuel technologies and phasing out of diesel vehicles behavioral changes and public awareness promote awareness campaigns focusing on reducing individual carbon footprints car pooling waste management etc in the light of this editorial let's try to write the mains practice question why is the issue of air pollution in delhi more severe compared to other metropolitan cities in india what factors contribute to this situation and what measures can be suggested suggested to address this problem try to write this question with the above discussed information regarding air pollution in national capital of india with this let's move on to next editorial topic this article discusses the ongoing crisis in manipur focusing on the constitutional challenges related to managing diversity in india it highlights issues such as innovation of article 355 the breakdown of constitutional machinery and special provisions for northeastern states let's see in detail about this article let's see what are all the major causes of the crisis and its socio political implications let's see what are all the causes of let's see what are all the major causes of this crisis and its socio political implications ethnic tension conflict between different tribal groups like meetis cookies over identity land right and autonomy insurgency the region has been affected by insurgent groups leading to instability and violence economic disparities unequal distribution of resources and opportunities among various groups political demands various tribal and minority groups of this region demands autonomy or separate units fueling tension to this crisis breakdown of law and order which escalates violence requires escalating violence requires military intervention and additional security measures in this crisis role of article 355 of the indian constitution is vital let's see what 
what are all the provisions are important under Article 355 of Indian Constitution. Article 355 gives the Union Government the power to protect states against external aggression and internal disturbance. It also allows the Centre to take necessary actions to maintain law and order and prevent a breakdown of governance. The innovation of Article 355 in Manipur indicates the Centre's role in safeguarding peace and stability in states. With this, let's discuss the constitutional provisions for diversity management. Article 29 protects the right of minority groups to preserve their language, culture and traditions. Article 30 which gives minorities the right to set up and run their own educational institutions. And Article 371 it provides special power to states like Nagaland, Mizoram, Sikkim and Manipur which is northeastern states to protect their cultural laws, land and resources. Article 371 of the Indian constitution also allows the creation of autonomous district councils to govern tribal areas and ensure local self-government. It aims to protect the unique cultural identities of the northeastern states with promoting national integrity. Let's move on to Representation of Peoples Act 1950, which gives autonomous to tribal communities of northeastern, which, which gives representation in parliament to tribal communities of northeastern states. The, the Representation of Peoples Act 1951 governs election and the distribution of seats in legislative assemblies. Amendment to the RPA have been made to ensure fair representation of tribal communities in northeast states. This amendment ensures that small communities like Budia Lepsha in Sikkim received adequate representation in states' governance. To resolve this crisis, with respect to diversity management, let us see some of the way forward measures in political, economical and social angle. Political solution. Open dialogue. Bring all communities together for discussion to address their concern and promote peace. Power sharing. Ensure local governance for tribal areas through autonomous councils. Local empowerment. Strengthen local bodies and give more control to communities over their own resources and governances. Let us move on to economic solutions. Fair development, which ensures equal development in all development in all areas, particularly for marginalized groups. Job creation, create more job creation programs to reduce unemployment and frustration in conflict areas. For example, Northeast Rural Livelihood Pro Project, Infrastructure Development, Improve roads, schools and hospitals, especially in remote areas. For example, Northeast Road Sector Development Scheme. Social, social Solutions. Cultural Programs. Promote activities that engage cultural understanding between different tribal groups. Example, Hornbill Festival of Nagaland. Education. Introduce school programs that teach students about diversity and need for unity. For example, Bridging Cultures Initiative Week-Long Cultural ex Exchange With respect to law and order, community policy which involved local peoples in law enforcement to build trust among them Anti-insurgency Balance security action with rehabilitation of those who want to surrender and return to normal life Confidence building Temporary ceasefire Enforce ceasefires to create space for negotiation John Join community councils. Form councils with members from all communities to work together on common issues like education and health care facilities. Judicial oversight. To ensure judicial reviews, government action to protect everyone's constitutional rights. Within the discussion of editorial, let us try to write the practice means questions. Discuss the significance of Article 29 and 30 of Indian Constitution in safeguarding the rights of minorities and how do these provisions contribute to maintaining cultural diversity in India. That is all about today's editorial analysis. Thank you for listening. In the conclusion, if you like this video, share it to your friends, give your valuable comments and don't forget to subscribe this channel. Thank you.